Holiday photo assignment prizes are rolling in. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 47. Today is the last day for the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale over in the Cazillion store. Head over to Cazillo.com slash store, type in the discount code HOLIDAY at checkout and you will get 30% off of anything and everything you purchase. Perfect time to, buy, to get those holiday gifts. Speaking of last day, today is also the last day to pick up the Creative Cloud Photoshop and Lightroom, uh, what do they call it, no pre-purchase or something like that before, in order to get the $9.99 a month deal, you had to pre-purchase CS3 or newer. Now you don't have to, but that does end today, so head over and pick that up, and I think I'm actually going to do the same thing and, and head over and pick that up. A couple of videos that I wanted to talk about this week, so we're making their rounds. First one is this one showing the D5100 giving you manual control in live view mode. I love this because it just goes to show what all you can do with a little bit of software tweaking and some of the things that the manufacturers are actually holding back on us. So um, yeah, check this video out, especially if you have a D5100 or a 7000. Um, yeah, we're still really behind the Canon guys on the hack firmware versus Magic Lantern. But it's still neat that they're finally able to do it and they're starting on it and they're trying it out. Next video is this one showing light painting with an iPhone and an iPad. Goes to show that you don't need real expensive stuff in order to do some really awesome light painting photographs. So go ahead and check that out. Really cool. A little gimmicky with just the iPhone and the iPad. But hey, it works and you really just need a light source. And uh, light painting works out just fine. The other one is a D800E versus a Pride of Lions. This is so awesome. The photos they got out of this by motorizing a D800E worked out really well. So uh, good job on that. Awesome photos. Nikon Rumors posted this article with some amazing photos of Scotland. Some really cool landscape photos with a story on how they were created for each one. Check that article out. Um, wow. Just wow. Just uh, awesome stuff. Here's another interesting new product that's out, these little rubber band macro lenses that you tape onto your phone. Um, I like it because it goes over top of any kind of a case, any size phone. I think it's a really cool little product if I was into iPhone photography, I guess. Um, you know, but the, then again, as they say, you know, the best camera in the world is the one you have in your hand, so, or the one you have with you, so, you know, it's better than nothing. Uh, 15 bucks, you could, you could pick one of these up, and if you wanted a couple of them, you can actually stack them. Uh, you will lose some quality when you're stacking them, but do you want the shot or do you want quality? There's always a compromise uh, in everything in photography. Pop Photo also posted this article with the seven tips to get the most from your gear for beginners. Uh, the number two thing I think they say in that list is read your manual and you do need to read your f manual it is super important to read that manual go through it they say skim it I say take a look at this video of mine and these are the things that you really need to know and pull from that manual and commit to heart about that camera so that you can be successful and then move on through the rest of this these seven things really good article and uh, well read good reasons for everything and I agree with it with portraits, when you focus on the eye with single point AF, which eye do you focus on? Typically, I will focus on the eye that is closer to the camera. So in this situation, I'll be focusing on this eye. But sometimes I will switch it. And it, if I do switch it, it's in this type of scenario where I had my main light coming in from this side and it's actually hitting this eye. But for the most part, the viewer's eye when looking at a photograph they want the eye to be sharpest, the bigger of the two eyes. 
to be sharper. So if you're turned this way to the camera, you're going to want this one. If you're turned the other way to the camera, then you're going to want the other one. But most of the time, I'd say about 75% of the time, I'm going after the closer eye to the camera. What are your thoughts on refurbished Nikon lenses? Do you prefer to get them Nikon refurbished store or do you have a better place? If I was going to buy a Nikon refurbished lens, I would probably go ahead and buy it from the Nikon store. That way you have the true Nikon warranty and it's actually a refurbished lens. If um, you could buy it from another store like Adorama, that kind of thing, as long as it says Nikon refurbished, then it's actually been refurbished by them and then just a third party bought that stock from them and is reselling it. So I would just be aware of what you're buying, buy it from a store like Adorama or B&H or Amazon, check the seller to be sure that it's a USA Nikon refurbished piece or whatever country you're in so that you have the proper warranty and you should be fine. That said, I have bought a number of lenses, um, one of which is my 300-2.8 that I bought online. I actually bought it on eBay. The guy had good documentation on it. He was the first owner and it was just serviced with Nikon before he sent it to me. He showed me the documentation, which was good. So, um, you know, you can get lucky. I would watch all of those. Watch KEH, maybe watch Adorama. B&H uh, sometimes will have some used stock. There are a bunch of places out there that you could get some really good used gear. Just look around and see what you can find, and don't forget about Craigslist either. I promise you guys some prizes for the year-end photo contest, the holiday one. Make sure you get your photos posted up to the forum. I forget the date. It's right after Christmas. Um, I forget. Doesn't matter. I'll put it right here on the screen. Uh, anyway, one of the prizes, of course, going to be an I Create Photographs t-shirt. And I also have some Honol light modifiers. Uh, I really like these modifiers. They're nice and easy to use. They Velcro on with a really innovative little Velcro guy that just goes around the outside. It doesn't change the, the, the you don't have to stick the Velcro right on the lens. It go, actually wraps around it. So I um, have a couple of these things. I have a, uh, a snoo or sorry, a grid. I have some filters and I also have this gobo you can use with white or black. And so I think I might have a couple more of these. And also I'm gonna throw in another signed photograph. You guys can pick whatever photo you want off of my Flickr and I'll print that and sign it and send it over. So that's one of the prizes. I'm working on more bigger prizes. Hopefully I'll be able to announce them. I have not heard back from the sponsors yet on uh, what I can give away, but I'm um, hoping they're gonna be pretty big ones. So make sure you're taking your camera to the holiday parties and going out and shooting some lights or you know, Christmas lights or any of that kind of thing. Get some really awesome holiday or Christmas or whatever photos and post them over to the forum. And uh, should be a pretty neat contest with some awesome prizes. Speaking of products, I have two things that I'm gonna mention today. Uh, the first one is this Epson Stylus Photo R2000 photo printer. It just came in the mail last, uh, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday it came in the mail. Just today I finally had time to unbox it and take a look at it. Uh, so far so good. I think it's going to be a really nice addition. I actually started walking around the studio and realizing how many Epson products we have. We actually have a 44, a 24, a little 10 inch printer and a scanner and now this 13 inch printer. So we're definitely an Epson house here at the studio and uh, should be a nice little addition. It's gonna be great for taking on uh, like photo shoots and you know, smaller printer. Got a good price point at around $500. But uh, like I said, I'll have a full review of that for next week. What I wanna talk about today is actually this Think Tank retrospective, there as the phone rings. Uh, this Think Tank retrospective 15L, which is their laptop bag. Uh, something new that they just released as it gets caught on my mic. Nice little bag, holds my laptop, iPad right in there in that pocket. And then I have this nice internal pocket where I have the majority of my, of my stuff, like smaller stuff, like flash drives and pens and stuff in that pocket. Um, down here in this bag, I have my hard drive and uh, another hard drive in that guy and holds 
more pens and stuff like that down there. What I've actually been doing is sealing just the one side because I don't need that hard drive very much. Just once in a while, I use it when I'm out on the road. I'm more in getting to the laptop and the, the iPad more often. Uh, then of course, if you have a retrospective 30 or 20 or any of those, you know that it has another back pocket back here. And so I can then put my cords and stuff back in that pocket. My goal with this bag was to get something smaller and lighter. And that's what, and this definitely fit the bill. Um, this thing was nice and light. It cut down on the weight that I'm carrying every day. Because I was carrying that shapeshifter bag. And while it's a nice bag, it's just too heavy. And, you know, I haven't really been keeping the laptop and a camera body with me all the time. I've actually been taking another smaller bag with me with a single body and lens and stuff in it all the time. So I wanted to just cut down on just the in and out all the time. So went with this one. I think it's a really nice little bag. Another cool thing, I actually ordered a couple of extra add-ons. Um, the only thing that I couldn't really fit in here was my uh, headphones. So uh, I have a set of Sony studio monitor headphones and um, they probably could fit in this front pocket, but I didn't want to smash them in. So what I did is I ordered an additional uh, lens drop-in thing which goes over here on this end and there's actually this hopefully you can see this right here there's actually a holder right there that you can put anything on there so I ordered one of the flash drop-ins and also a lens drop-in to put right on there and then I can put them on the outside still gonna keep it nice and light but I'll be able to carry anything that I need and actually have a little extra space it's also nice and thin, or it can obviously get bigger if you have a lot of stuff in it like I do. But um, nice little bag. Thanks for, to uh, Think Tank Photo for sending that over. And um, if you did want more about my bags, the Think Tank bags, I actually did a video about all the different bags that I had a while ago. You can check out this link. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See you.